Uh, we're so pleased to have you all here today at the Centre Abbé Pierre. As you know, this is our space that honors the memory of the founder of the social movement, Emmaus International. Thank you so much for making the trip here from Paris. We know it must have been a little bit difficult to get here despite the snow. Um, here at the Centre Abbé Pierre, we have not only the museum, we also have a restaurant that you might want to check out later for lunch. We have several guest houses that people can rent for their vacation. We have a bookstore, we have a small cafe, and there are also some gardens that aren't as nice this time of year, but come back in the summer and they will be lovely. Um, so let's get started. I'll tell you about Abbé Pierre, um, his youth, um, his, uh, basically his pathway toward becoming the figure we all know and love today. So he was born Henri Grouez on August 5th, 1912 in Lyon. Uh, he came from a Catholic family and his, he grew up with strong values from Christianity and he grew up with a strong sense of solidarity as well. Um, young Henri's father in particular was very involved in charitable works. On Sunday mornings, his father would shave and cut the hair of homeless men for free. He was a free barber for the poor, which is really wonderful. Henri got involved with the Scouts in 1925, and this was a really big influence on his life. Henri then studied with the Jesuits in Lyon, and at one point he took a school trip to Rome. Um, he was really inspired by this trip, and um, especially a visit they made to Assisi, and he started to read about the life of St. Francis. From then on, Henri spent a lot of time reading and praying and thinking about what his purpose was in the world. This led him to become a monk in 1931, when he was 19 years old. He spent years and years studying at a monastery in the Jerome, and he took his vows in 1937. The life of a monk is very challenging, and the living conditions were harsh, and he reported feeling lonely a lot of the time as well. Um, it didn't make things easier that he was dealing with some long-term health problems while he was there. Nevertheless, Henri described this experience as really invaluable preparation for the rest of his life. In 1938, he was ordained a priest, but it became harder and harder for him to tolerate life at the monastery, and his health problems eventually made it impossible for him to continue. So he was given permission to leave the order of monks in 1939, and he took a few positions later as an assistant priest and as a chaplain. And then, we can't escape this, when World War II broke out in September 1939, Henri was drafted, but he spent most of the next few months hospitalized, and he was demobilized in August 1940. And then 1942 would mark a new phase in Henri's life. That year, two Jewish people knocked on his door because they were being hunted down. He took them in, and he wanted to help them. With the help of a nun, he got fake ID papers for these two Jewish people, and he helped them escape to Switzerland. That made him really realize the extent of the persecution that the Jews were facing, and it made him want to take action further. Um, he started some networks of escape routes that went through the Alps to Switzerland, and he set up a workshop in his home to create fake ID papers. From then on, Henri was a member of the resistance. He used several different pseudonyms during this time, including Abbé Pierre, which is how we now know him, in order to avoid being identified by the Gestapo and by the Vichy police. After the war, Abbé Pierre 
was elected a member of parliament, um, and he represented his department of Meurthe et Moselle in the National Assembly. During his um, time in politics, Abbe Pierre fought to defend resistance fighters, and he campaigned for the status of conscientious objector to be recognized, among other things. In 1947, Abbe Pierre rented out a large house in Neuilly Plaisance, which is an eastern suburb of Paris. His idea was to turn this house into an international youth hostel to help young people. In 1949, um, Abbe Pierre was called on to help a former prisoner named Georges. Um, Georges was hopeless at this point in his life, and he had tried to commit suicide. Abbe Pierre called this the moment when the Emmaus movement was born. And this is how he describes his thought process at that time. Without giving it a second thought, I spontaneously decided to go against the very notion of charity. Instead of saying, oh, you're unhappy? I'll give you a home, a job, I'll give you some money. The circumstances instead made me say quite the opposite. I could only tell him the truth. You are dreadfully unhappy, and I have nothing to give you. But seeing as you want to die, you've got nothing to lose. So why don't you come and help me help others? If ever that principle were forgotten, Emmaus would cease to exist. This is what Emmaus is all about. It's about saying to people who see themselves as a burden and who don't see any point to their lives, I have nothing to give you except my friendship. And I ask you to help me so that together we can help others. Georges came to live at the house in Neuilly as the first Emmaus companion, and the community only grew from there. As an aside, if you're not familiar with what it means to be a companion, these are people who have experienced homelessness and social exclusion and who come to Emmaus. Um, companions receive accommodation, food, and clothing, and a small stipend in exchange for 40 hours of work per week in the Emmaus movement. But during this time, Abbe Pierre was still in politics, but then in 1951, he did not win re-election. So he lost the income that he had used to keep the Emmaus community running. He tried begging to get some money, and he tried going through the trash for items that could be sold. He even took part in a game show on Radio Luxembourg, and he won 256,000 francs, which he used to buy a van and some land. During winter 1954, Abbe Pierre was struck by how many people in France were living in substandard housing. The same winter, the government had just decided not to pass an amendment that would have allocated money to building emergency shelters. Abbe Pierre did what he could, and he traveled around Paris with his companions, giving out blankets and soup and coffee to people who were living in the streets. And he did something else. He launched an appeal that was broadcast over the radio, calling on the population to make donations for the homeless. He was incredibly successful with this appeal. Um, not only did individuals donate, the government even freed up 10 billion francs to build emergency housing, and the government approved a law that forbade evictions during the winter. Media around the world covered these events of 1954. Everyone wanted to know about this man, Abbe Pierre, who had roused his country to take action. From then on, Abbe Pierre was invited to many different countries to talk about his experiences, and he got involved in a range of struggles against poverty. He campaigned for democracy, against hunger, for the right to decent housing, and for the right to asylum. 
everywhere he went in the world, in the world, he was a champion for the most vulnerable. This year, 2019, is the 12th anniversary of Abbé Pierre's passing, which is, of course, why we are here today at the Centre Abbé Pierre. Uh, later on, there will be a memorial walk to the cemetery where he's buried. It's about two kilometers away. And um, there will be a brief church service also that you are welcome to participate in. Um, there will be tea served afterward, and you are welcome to stick around. So thank you very much for your attention today. I hope that you've learned something and that you'll take some time to explore the museum and view the exhibits that honor the life of this extraordinary man. Thank you very much.